What's going on guys? Welcome back to Glaze Coins. I believe confidence creates confidence. This is not financial advice. Go ahead and hit that like button, that subscribe button, so I don't have to ask twice if you want to be nice. Today, we're going to be looking at a couple absolute bangers for cryptocurrency, looking at some future price forecasts, and taking a look at their charts, you know, seeing what we're looking at right now. Obviously, we're in the crypto winter, the bear market, um, the worst time to be alive, whatever you guys want to call it. When it comes to market conditions, uh, it's not looking too great. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it, but there's always money to be made on the way up, on the way down, and obviously, if you're holding when you bought towards the all-time high right now sucks, but if you're buying towards the all-time low or buying towards, you know, a lot of you who are just getting into crypto or a lot of us who are getting into crypto um, have never ever seen prices for a lot of these cryptocurrencies like this, and the charts just back it up. I mean, there are some cryptocurrencies that I never thought I'd be able to see and buy at these levels. So it's like, you know, it's, it gives you that mouth-watering but also hesitant type of feel, which is why I always try to bring you guys the information, education, and better understanding so you guys can create that confidence, which always creates confidence. And any financial or investment decision you make, uh, whenever you're confident in it and you understand it, you have that confidence, you know, you're going to be better off, hands down. Real quick, guys, I know you like free money. I like free money. Who doesn't like free money? All right, so you want some free money? Hit that Weeble link. That's all you got to do, right? Uh, set up a new account, put a penny in, you get $9,600 in free stocks, potentially. It's usually about $30 to $300, so I guess worst case scenario, you get 30 bucks for free. Are many other YouTubers bringing you those deals, giving you $30? I mean, all I ask you guys to do is hit the like button and subscribe button. That's free. I mean, I guess I'm asking you for a penny and like five minutes of your time to put in an email address. But Weeble has options trading. It has stocks. It has crypto. They have everything. Um, if you want to support the channel, go ahead and check them out, guys. Uh, I definitely prefer it over Robinhood. The layout isn't as user-friendly, but in my opinion, the metrics, the statistics that you can access, the uh, real-time data, in def depending on your level, I mean, there's so much more in Weeble than almost any other fintech um, exchange application. So go ahead and take advantage of that, guys. Without further ado, the five cryptocurrencies we're going to be looking at today right here, Solana, Avalanche, ApeCoin, EngineCoin, and Ethereum Name Service. Service. These are all cryptocurrencies that I'm a fan of. I've talked about before in the past. Um, I do believe long term will be absolute bangers. Everyone on this list, except maybe one, there's one on this list. We'll get right to it. That uh, you know, I'm not sure if it's going to be around too much longer. It's it's kind of been flip flopping, and uh, what we're about to see here in a second kind of backs that up. So we're going to go over to our handy dandy coin price forecast prediction model. Um, obviously take all predictions, all forecasts with a grain of salt. Um, when we were looking at them a couple months ago when I started my channel, uh, you know, some of the predictions we were looking at were like $15 mana or like $20 sandbox by now. Obviously things change, you know, all the predictions and algorithmic machine learning is great until you know who invades you know who. You know, there's not much you can do about that or until, you know, some, uh, you know, some monkeys have some, uh, bumps to spread around. <laughs> uh, luckily, I'm in America. Let me know if that's a big thing where you are yet. Um, I just saw something about the World Health Organization is holding a meeting to trying to declare, uh, whether or not this is an international emergency or not. There's not too much over, uh, about it over here in the States, um, besides the fear-mongering by the media, obviously. <laughs> They're never gonna let a good crisis go to waste, but we'll get right into this. This is the only crisis you guys need to worry about right now, which is, which cryptocurrency dip are you gonna buy? So we are right over here on Coin Price Forecast. This is a tool you guys can use, literally coinpriceforecast.com. Um, I'll scroll down here, give you a little uh, idea of what it is. Forecasting accuracy is a key metric for our customers. We are constantly improving it with the continual introduction of newer data science and machine learning techniques. Obviously, data scientists are not our friends, shout out Keenan Grace, but the machine learning and the self-learning technology is different than traditional programming. The system uses prediction models Models, a set of parameters that the computer can use to make decisions, and a learning component that allows the system to change the parameters based on experience. Over time, a computer transforms its own model and parameters to fit its experience with forecasts and real-world outcomes. So, you know, things are always unprecedented until they happen. You know, things are never, you know, you can only really be surprised about one thing once. Once it happens, you should have at least some sort of 
expectation based on experience that it can happen again. Not necessarily that it will happen again, however, that it has the capability of occurring once more. Looking at Solana, guys, ticker symbol SOL. This is one of the biggest, um, most well-known cryptocurrencies in the world. This is a cryptocurrency that not too long ago had some of the most institutional um, rumor mills circulating. Uh, people from Goldman Sachs, I want to say JP Morgan, Citibank, Bank of America, all these big Wall Street financial institutions were saying that they thought Solana would be the next Visa or MasterCard and comparing it to the Visa of the cryptocurrency world and or the Visa of the blockchain. I can't remember how they said it. However, Solana took that, said hold my beer and continued to have ridiculous network outages for like the entire year of 2022 thus far. I'm not sure what is going to happen with Solana. I am a huge believer in Solana's potential. I don't know if I'm necessarily a big believer in this coin price forecast um, saying by the end of 2023 that it would be down 18% from the current price at the time of this recording of about $36. Um, this is saying that we're not going to see we're, we're going to stay under 36 until the start of 2024, mid-year 2024, we're looking at the same price. Do I think that is probable? No. I think we'll definitely see Solana climb. We'll take a look here at the levels in a second. Um, I think this is the machine learning, understanding, and starting to gain some experience that everything can go to hell in a handbasket really, really fast. And so it's kind of just predicting the fact that this can all happen again, I guess, but you know, a WAR, I don't want to say anything that'll set off the algorithm, but something like this, uh, to many of us in the Western world has, you know, kind of came out of nowhere, but to a lot of like people in Ukraine, Ukrainian citizens and stuff like that, they've been training and thinking about this event for 20 plus years. Some people's entire lives that are now adults have been spent with the idea of this thing is going to happen at some point and obviously it's a little bit older news now um but that spiked all of this it really was the uh the can the straw that broke the camel's back in the sense of oil prices sanctions different uh levies to being set um there's a lot of a lot of different things politically obviously that you could dive into but what we're here for are the financials the investment the investment tips and you know different things to look out for macroeconomically those things matter um but when it comes to cryptocurrency you guys know as well as i do a good pump off someone famous saying a name of a crypto on a late night tv show can literally change lives so all of all of that kept in mind take everything with a grain of salt you never know um who knows? Maybe Bitcoin's going to be the next Terra Luna. I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> so we'll actually go over here and uh, look at Solana's chart. And as you can see, um, we're really right in the middle for the RSI. We're not looking oversold. We're not looking overbought. The MACD on the daily candles as of right now is uh, it's converged. It is sitting up ahead, which is why, you know, on the original screen coin market cap, you saw that Solana was up on the week. Like many cryptocurrencies are, however, when you're down as much as you are, on the month or on the year being up 10% on the week is, uh, unless you bought at the beginning of the week. That's the thing. Perspective. It's nonsensical for you to put much effort into thinking, uh, you know, Solana's down 80% this year. If you just bought Solana a week ago and now it's up 15%, Solana's up 15% for you. It doesn't matter what it was before, you know what I mean? Uh, people like to see that and think once they, that like if they buy something right here that they need to be acknowledging the price movement from up here. That's not necessarily true. Just because you buy right here doesn't mean it's going up here. But just because it's been up here doesn't mean that if it reaches it again, it'll plummet. Um, obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Solana. If they can fix their network outages, we could see a return to the top seven, top five cryptocurrencies in the world, hands down, if not making a run up to three or four, you know, depending on what's going on with BNB right now. Real quick though, I did notice a news article, I just got a notification on my phone, that Cristiano Ronaldo, um, arguably the greatest soccer player of all time, just signed a deal with Binance for an NFT partnership. That is massive. That is huge. If you guys didn't know, soccer is football, whatever you guys want to call it, the number one sport worldwide. And when you take arguably the number one star ever, like, I don't know if you guys know, 
about soccer, football, international play, anything like that. Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi are like today's Pele. You know, um, most kids in my generation or even younger are not going to know many of the uh, Ronaldinho's and the David Beckham's, the uh, Thierry Henry's, different things like that, but they're going to know the Cristiano Ronaldo's, the Lionel Messi's, the Neymar's. Um, they're, they're up there. To see Ronaldo sign that deal, it's it's mind-blowing. I was not expecting that, especially with B&B, with Binance going through the SEC court cases and, um, you know, everything with the whole market conditions right now. It's just kind of wild to me to think that they're still landing partnerships. I mean, good on CZ, man. Uh, hats off to you. You're ha, absolute workhorse. That guy, that guy is something different. So, uh, but I mean, hey, that's why I'm a huge believer in Binance. Um, they're they're making moves even when most cryptocurrencies are struggling to survive. They're struggling to make progress and uh, achieving that through the struggle, which is always the best. Anything that comes easy, there's a reason for it. If you have to work hard for it, it's going to feel a lot better. So um, looking at Solana, though, on the day, we'll pull up the three-minute candles just to get a little bit more um, volume, volume per candle here. We can see... Uh, <laughs> We're looking pretty good on the week, guys. Um, however, like I did say, I will zoom out real quick now that I zoomed in and messed it all up because I did want to show you guys the levels. Uh, it's looking like the bottom, you know, is right around this $26. That's going to be my buy range for Solana. If I'm going to look to get into it, if I'm going to look to load up, um, if I see us drop below this 26 if I see this 26 let loose, I am not buying. That is what you call catching a falling knife. If you try, if you thought that you know when it dropped right here, that you should buy at this forty because that support held, um, you probably thought you were correct for a little while until that happened, because up until that point, you know we hadn't seen that level in literal years. It had been since August of twenty twenty one since the last time we saw Solana at forty dollars. So uh, if it, you know, it, if it does fall to what, below this twenty six. I'm honestly going to say, I mean, we could see a $20 Solana. We could see a $15 Solana. If it wants to jump down even lower, we could see a $11 Solana. Um, do I think that's more probable than not? No. Do I think that we still have some price to shed? Yes. I do think we're still going to see some downward pressure. As you'll notice right here, uh, similar to one that we'll pull up in a little bit, Solana has really been trading in a downward channel. And uh, it's not the good downward channel that you would imagine because it's not um, running parallel. It is, as you can see right here, just you know not doing too much for technicals, uh, but just kind of lining it up for you guys. You can see it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that both of these channels are descending. And uh, neither of them are running parallel. And by the looks of it, you know, if, after this one, two, and three confirmations on this support line right here, if we pop that, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be heading towards twenty dollars, I would say, and then possibly about ten right around here. You never know, obviously. Um, if Bitcoin and Ethereum start rallying, we could see a rally. If Solana has a massive network outage again and millions of dollars are lost, we could see it go to, you know, really low. I'm not going to say go to zero. I don't want to put that in the air, but you never know. And, uh, you know, Solana is just one of those one of those ones where it really could change the game or be more of a flash in the pan that, than we realized it was. So we'll move on to the next one, though, because we just spent a lot of time on Solana. The other big dog I wanted to show you guys is Avalanche, ticker symbol AVAX, A-V-A-X. Avalanche, these prices are starting to get very mouthwatering for me. Um, when I see AVAX around the 15, 10 to $15 range, if I do, uh, you better bet your butt I am backing the truck up and loading it. Um, I might have to go rent a U-Haul. I don't know if I'm going to need to get a storage unit. I am packing as much AVAX as I can possibly fit. <laughs> because, I mean, I have no doubt in my mind AVAX will reach $100 again. No doubt in my mind. AVAX is one of the fastest platforms I've ever used. I don't know if you guys have used Avalanche at all. Um, it's a beast. It really is. It is lightning fast. The only reason you're seeing it down here is because everything else is down. There's so many positives that weigh out the so few cons with Avalanche 
that it really is guilty by association in the sense of this crypto winter bringing it down. Uh, but like, I mean, hey guys, we can see this jump up to 170 next bull run, and that's a 10x on your money. And that's if the price stays right here. So let's look at the chart. Right now, I don't know if I would buy just because we did see the test of the $13 range, similar to what we saw with Solana. You never know if this is going to be a little test like we saw up here, a drop, flash, test, and then a drop again. Um, but I will say the AVAX is looking a lot better than Solana, in my opinion. These are a lot healthier of movements. As you can see, we do have longer term downward pressure that was broken, and then we kind of restarted it and reset it right here. However, we are starting to plateau, and this is the longest we've plateaued in quite a quite a bit, um, quite a period of time. This section right here of plateauing, you know, right here to right about there is 11 days. The last time we've traded sideways for 11 days, um, you'd be hard pressed to find it on this chart right here. So that's a good sign. Obviously, past performance is not indicative of future performance. Um, that's why tech, you know, technical analysis, a lot of people call astrology for men, but uh, if you believe it and it works, then there you go. So Avalanche, I think I'm going to wait just a little bit, you know, just a little bit to see if we test this $13 range again, but I, I, I honestly believe that AVAX will hold the 13 unless we, you know, if Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes to 10K, none of this means anything. You know what I mean? That's the thing, guys, is if Bitcoin goes to 10K and Ethereum goes to $100, I would be surprised if any of the top cryptocurrencies in the world are left. I mean, there's just... You can have all the utility and everything that you want, but when the two cryptocurrencies that make up 60% of the entire market cap of crypto in the world out of almost 20,000 cryptocurrencies, when two of those make up over 60% of the market, um, there's, there's nothing you can do. With those tank, everything's tanking. So I do think AVAX is a way better conservative bet than Solana as of right now. When you're talking about buying a dip and having almost a guaranteed 10x on your money, uh, I can see AVAX easily setting all-time highs next bull run. It will, its all-time high as of right now is about 148. I can see us flying past 150, heading towards the 160s to 170s next bull run, and uh, I don't really think it would take much effort. I think you would see a steady amount of growth. The one thing about Solana's chart that you saw was massive spikes in price, and uh, obviously that's great for gains, but not for sustainability, and um, that's why you've seen, you know, this... AVAX run, it almost kind of looks like a mountain. So <laughs> hopefully we don't uh, keep snowballing down um, in this avalanche. But we'll move on to our next cryptocurrency so we can keep this video, you know, a little a little shorter. Okay, guys, this is one I noticed. I was doing, you know, messing around with some charts, and I noticed that since May, let me see, about May 11th of this year, Engine coin has traded between 75 cents and as of recently hitting a new low of 38 cents with the massive drop in Bitcoin and Ethereum. So between 38 cents and 75 cents is a channel that it has traded in for over 30 days now. Um, if that isn't some sort of consistency during a time of unprecedented volatility, I don't know what is. That is a very, very, very good sign. Um, one thing I used to say a lot on this channel is engine coin is... I mean, it really needs no introduction when you talk about a pure pioneer for the NFT space and the Mount Rushmore of NFT and gamified cryptocurrencies. Engine Coin will be on there every time. If someone doesn't have it on their Mount Rushmore of NFTs, um, they don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> or they're just mad because they lost some Ethereum, they lost some money on Engine Coin. So uh, I, I would say this right here is a little bit promising. We're looking at the four-hour candles currently, and uh, we're starting to run up again. However, I wanted to show you guys because. This is our first consistent gain, even though we have consistently traded in this channel right here. Uh, for a while there, it was an even finer channel. It was between 55 and 75 that we were trading in. We broke it, big flash down, touched this bottom right here, set a new support. Hopefully it holds. Hopefully it holds. That's all I'm going to say. But we have some higher highs that we're starting to establish for the very first time since this flash up gap fill um, that ended up not filling this gap that happened. Since then, uh, we're, we're establishing some higher highs and, as of recently, with the support right there, um, some higher lows. However, 
One thing that you'll know from the stock market if you've done any stock trading is you trade in triangles. Uh, anyone who knows technical analysis, I know the uh, guy, the my boss, I guess you could call him over at Newman NFT, um, the NFT project I'm the head of crypto analytics at. He One thing he always talks about is trading in triangles and uh, he's a day trader he trades every single morning and pulls in some excellent profit which is why it's great to uh, get up on the Newman NFT so you can have access to that but when you see volume spikes like here and it just barely pushed out of this I mean this had all it could do 2.378 million dollars traded in a four hour time period uh, compare that to about the half a million that it's generally experiencing on average that was a huge volume pump and it barely just that wick kind of kissed out right here and right here you could see the same thing happen I think there's going to be a big breakout right around here um, I think it'll be a breakout negatively unfortunately I do um, I do think it'll be a negative break breakout it'll most likely if it does drop negatively I would expect a test of the 38 again and that will be it if not we could see a breakout and a gap fill back up to the 75 because at the very minimum us heading anywhere in this range up towards here guys I mean this is where we've traded for over a month now closing in on two months so it is more likely than not that we will stay in this range it is more likely that we will stay above 38 and below 75 then for us to clear either one regardless of the triangle so uh, keep that in mind and we'll move on to the next one all right the good news and positivity is coming to a halt <laughs> ape coin um, this is a cryptocurrency that I have been a hater on since it released I mean there's not really much else I could say anytime um, a lot of people like something I feel like I shouldn't like it. It's just, I guess that's just me. I don't know what it is, but that's, uh, I guess you could say that's my toxic trait. So, um, I, yeah, I have a hard time, uh, whenever I see a lot of popularity and everyone starts talking about it, my thing isn't like, oh, I should check it out. I think like, why is everyone talking about it? Where did this come from? What, you know, uh, how are they able to captivate so much attention out of nowhere um, simultaneously beyond different groups of people? You know, when things like that happen, it's rare and it's very interesting. And uh, if you're able to study and capitalize on that, I mean, the monetization is there, which is, I think, you know, what what uh, ApeCoin was able to do. So we were, we did see, as we did with most, uh, a new all-time low for ApeCoin. I'll set this to, you know, a thicker one. We'll go, there we go, 3x on it. Nice, big, thick line so you know how low it is. Um, I'm just kidding. It's, you know, comparatively, I mean, I have made multiple videos on Terra Luna, and look how far that got me. So, yeah, if you're an ApeCoin holder, um, yeah, I'm not hating on you. I'm just hating on uh, anything that's popular. So, uh, that's just me. <laughs> but we have a descending channel here that has held strong since just about May 11th, uh, right around the same time as the last one, and that's why I wanted to show you guys, because um, this one, however, is a channel between $3 and almost $10. That is a much different channel than the, you know, 50 cent to 75 cent we were talking about with Engine Coin. Obviously, ApeCoin is much newer. Um, it is much more reliant on publicity, momentum, marketing, celebrities, and the NFT movement, and when Ethereum is down and so many things are built on Ethereum, so many NFTs are minted on Ethereum, it's going to be very difficult for any Ethereum-based projects to really take off. So uh, I do think when, Ape, you know, next bull run, ApeCoin's going to do absolutely insane things. We could see well over all-time highs. If there's one thing ApeCoin has shown, it's that it is the most marketable, the most mass-adoptable the easiest uh, distributed cryptocurrency in the Western world. I had never seen a, any cryptocurrency launch on m like seven different major exchanges, centralized or decentralized, all at the exact same moment. Like literally at the same moment it launched. So I don't know the backdoor cooperation and collaboration that took. Um, as long as it was cooperation and collaboration and not collusion, I'm all right with it. But uh, yeah, ApeCoin, guys, I would I would wait a little bit. I would wait 
you know, to come back down to this $3 range, as you can see with the descending channel, um, it's looking like it's going to be pushed a little bit back towards this $3 range. That'll be a great buy zone. That's my buy zone. Uh, even though I'm not a fan of the cryptocurrency, I am a fan of making money. So if it's going to get into a buy zone, and I think that buy zone could flip up, you know, if I can grab some ApeCoin at $3, and then flip it real quick on a swing up towards $9, yeah, I don't care if the cryptocurrency is dedicated to paying people to hit me in the nuts. If it's gonna three times my money, I'm gonna buy it and flip it. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just, you know, that's it's a no-brainer, honestly. So, we'll get into the last one, though, just because I'm sure this video's been long enough for you guys. I wanted to bring you guys a longer-form uh, video, kind of get into the charts. A little longer-winded and free-form like I used to do. Um, not so much, you know, sticking to the quick updates and things like that. It's, you know, it's hard, guys. Guys, I'm not I'm not gonna sit here and you know bullcrap you it's it's difficult to make content in the crypto world right now obviously a lot of people that I looked up to in the space uh, deal a lot with the stock market and then they dabble with crypto with me being crypto heavy almost like 99% crypto is my content it's ah oh man it's really difficult especially when uh, you have a great video idea and then Bitcoin dumps 10k like <laughs> I just uh, it's 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 very difficult but improvise adapt overcome and um, you know the best things in life often come from the hardest moments so well you know bear markets make billionaires bull markets make millionaires there's a reason for that buying you know anyone anyone can make money in the bull run we just had if you took three darts and closed your eyes and threw them at a dartboard and the dartboard had a bunch of different cryptocurrencies on it, you would have made money. I mean, that would that was how well you needed to know how to invest. And, uh, you know, this is a cryptocurrency that I have, you know, with my not financial advice, not an indication to buy, hold, or sell any cryptocurrency stock, NFT, or any investment opportunity talked about in this video or on this channel. But ENS, Ethereum name service, um, has made my subscribers some money. Uh, go ahead and comment down below if you have made any money off any of my callouts. And if you have, which ones? Um, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to put in how much you made. That's completely your, uh, your own private information. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of that whatsoever, just with... Everything happening in today's world with people, you know, streamers being swatted, people getting doxxed, different things like that. It's just, I'm not a fan of releasing private information like that. So, uh, which is why I use Brave Browser because they have the built-in VPN. And at some point, I'm hoping to get sponsored by Brave Browser because that'd be freaking cool. <laughs> Either way, guys, Ethereum name service had a descend, had a uh, wedge. It popped out and it fell into excellent buying territory. You saw quick flashes with these candlesticks on the bottom, uh, quick flashes to test this $7.31 support line, which held very well. The 7.30, 7.35 support held very well. I do expect it to hold again. Um, I don't expect, unless we see a big dump from Ethereum, specifically Ethereum this time, not as much Bitcoin. Unless we see a big dump from Ethereum, I do not I do expect the this bottom support, this basement, bedrock, whatever you want to call it, I do expect it to hold. The eight dollar and forty nine cent, eight dollar and fifty cent one, meh, not as much. Um, I definitely think it's more likely to see us dive back in and trade somewhere around here, like we just saw um, throughout the month of June thus far. But you know, uh, Ethereum name service has so much utility. I mean, when you're talking about the dot com bubble. We're talking about the dot ENS bubble, the dot ETH bubble. The Ethereum name service is just like dot com. I mean, you, it's literally being able to have a domain name under the Ethereum network. Are people going to want that? I don't know. Are you ever going to go to any domain on Ethereum? Yes. Well, probably someone's going to have to use it. I mean, it's like it's it's very very simple to me, and it just it blows my mind that more people aren't all about Ethereum name service, especially when you take a look at like the total supply, the max supply, circulating supply, all the supplies. Um, it definitely pops off the page when I look at it on a fundamental and technical aspect. And when you talk about like the tokenomics, just the, the potential for profit with a cryptocurrency like this is almost astronomical. It is almost unfathomable because we just this year saw, let me zoom out because you know, in case you're in doubt, we'll zoom out. 
$28 a piece was something that we just saw in early May when everything else was dying. This was a huge call out from me. And uh, right here, oh yeah, don't worry, it gets better. Because look at what Ethereum name service used to trade at before this crypto crash. We were talking about a bottom support line that was the basement at around $37, trading upwards in quick flashes into the $70 and $80 range. So the fact that we are all the way down here and looking at $8 Ethereum name service, I mean, guys, not financial advice. The next bull run, when it takes off, I would hope that you already have some of this in your bag. If not, it might be too late. All right, guys, that's going to be everything for the video. I just noticed my camera timer is at like 35 minutes. I'm not sure how long this video will be after the edit, but definitely hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Comment down low. Um, all comments help the algorithm. It doesn't matter what it is. Just staying engaged helps YouTube or helps the channel and shows YouTube that you guys love the channel, you guys like the content, and that YouTube should show it to more people, which is, you know, that's the goal here. Obviously, I love you guys. I love this, you know, personal relationship we have here, but... uh. Getting out to a broader audience would, you know, the more people we can help, the better. Either way, guys, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. Like, subscribe, comment, join, share. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter, at Clay's Coins, at Real Clay's Coins on Twitter. Uh, end screen videos for you to watch next. Go back and watch some of my old content. Um, I talk about so many different cryptocurrencies on here. I've probably talked about well over, if not close to, 100 different crypto on this channel in just the past six months about so go ahead and hit that subscribe button hit the like button all the buttons you can hit go ahead and hit them uh take care of yourselves stay safe most importantly stay hydrated stay happy and stay healthy and no matter what guys i will come back for you with another update even if it's to say that everything is dying even harder i'll be here <laughs> thank you guys